Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so uh, uh, today I will uh, continue uh, with my program, and in particular I will come back uh, to heat equations, and I decided also to give you some background on heat equations on manifolds in general, because this is a very rich object where, so to say, analysis, geometry, and probability theory uh, meet together. And probably it's, uh, if you are a probabilist, it's the first time you realize that you should learn geometry. And analysis, analysis to realize probably it's good to learn also probability theory. And I will explain a bit where this uh, comes from. So uh, going back to a very basic setting, take a Riemannian manifold and look at the heat uh, equation. So on the right-hand side, I have the uh, Laplacian uh, induced uh, by the metric here. And usually, there are two different communities, uh, the people coming from analysis and the people coming from probability theory. And usually you can distinguish the two communities if you look here whether there is a factor one half or not. Yes, so probabilists write uh, one half Laplacian, analysts uh, ignore the one half. As you can see today, I'm an analyst. <laughs> and probably also, sorry? Uh, well, this is, if you take Hodge theorem, then you have another uh, sign convention. But this is uh, a third communi community, I would say. OK, so one would like to understand uh, solutions uh, to uh, such uh, equations. And one basic question you can ask well, if you have such a solution, what can you say about the gradient of u? Or if u is positive, gradient of log u. How can you understand these things? There is a related question which comes under the name of Harnack inequalities. So if you have a solution, you would like to compare the solution at the point x at time uh, s uh, to the solution at y, maybe at some different time or at the same time. Yeah? And uh, actually, these two questions are more or less, uh, it's more or less the same question, because you can look at gradient estimates as infinitesimal versions of Harnack inequalities and Harnack inequalities you get from gradient estimates just by integrating along curves or geodesics. Uh, so it's uh, basically the same question. Well, let's come uh, to the even more uh, fundamental situation where you have a stationary solution, which means uh, a solution which, or a function which is harmonic. There it's usually good uh, not to insist that u is defined globally on all of your manifold. There may be obstructions for that. So typically, take some domain and try to find a function on u which is harmonic. And here I wrote one uh, classical theorem which uh, shows you why you need uh, to learn uh, geometry here. You may say, well, uh, coming back to this equation, uh, OK, this is a uh, uh, PDE equation. Of course, the operator is defined in geometric terms. Why should I worry about geometry? But you can see uh, it here. So uh, this is an estimate for a harmonic function, positive harmonic function on some domain, giving you estimating grad log u on the left-hand side. If you look at the right-hand side, you see this is independent of u. So what do you have here? 
some universal constant, depending only on the dimension of n. Then you certainly uh, have a term which measures uh, the distance to the boundary. Yeah? Because if you think that u is coming from a solution to uh, the Dirichlet problem, then the boundary values can be uh, quite arbitrary. Yeah? So you cannot control the gradient u close to the boundary. Yeah? And so you have to take this into account and the right scaling is one over distance to the boundary. Yeah? And here you see you need some other uh, ingredient which gives you a bound of Ricci on this domain from below. And that's where geometry uh, comes in when you try to understand uh, such a type uh, of uh, equations. Well, as I said, this is a classic uh, uh, result. Uh, some time ago, we proved uh, such kind of estimates just using uh, probabilistic uh, methods, Brownian motion. And we did more or less uh, 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 provided proofs uh, for most of Li Yao type estimates which are uh, around and uh, usually the method is uh, quite simple and gives you a strong result. So for instance, of course it's not so interesting reproving uh, things, but we wanted to understand how is the structure of such problems and how you can approach it in probabilistic terms. And actually in our proof we get an explicit value for the constant. In the classical proof it's just uh, there is some uh, constant. And it was a uh, work with Bruce Driver. Bruce uh, is very much interested in infinite dimension, getting estimates uh, there. And uh, if you know a bit the background, there is a famous book of Dan Strook on uh, uh, analysis on path space. Uh, and he writes that uh, Yao asked him whether he can prove something Yao himself cannot prove. Yeah? And so he said, well, I tried Li Yao estimate and prove it with probabilistic methods. And in this book, he has a whole chapter which is uh, entitled by uh, commitment of defeat, something like that. So he did not manage it. And so for some time, it was uh, uh, not clear how to do it. But uh, well, <laughs> it can be done. OK, uh, so what I said before, if you have uh, an estimate like this here, you just integrate it along GUD6, then uh, you get, for instance, uh, Harnack inequality. Take a geodesic ball of radius r, then you may look at the maximum of the uh, function on the geodesic ball of half the radius. You com can compare it to the minimum by some explicit constant which only depends on the dimension, lower bound of Ricci on the uh, uh, ball and the uh, uh, radius. You need uh, to measure distance uh, to the boundary. Well, now uh, coming back to the parabolic case, I would like to explain you in probabilistic terms there is an exact formula for the gradient of u, because this will be uh, important later on. In terms of a Brownian motion, and this is my notation, you remember uh, x, small x, is the starting point at time zero, and this is the position of Brownian motion at uh, time uh, t. And, uh, well, uh, to uh, remind you how we uh, defined this, uh, well, we said it should be the stochastic flow to this operator. So, for instance, for uh, functions uh, on M, you uh, should have uh, this defining uh, property. 
Well, uh, I need some uh, construction to explain uh, you uh, the formula. And this is the following. Uh, fix a point on M, right? And then define a linear transformation from the tension space at this point to the tension space by solving an ODE, yeah? where you have several ingredients. Here on the right-hand side, you have something which I call Ricci parallel. And uh, what is this? I made a diagram where you can exactly uh, see. This is a linear uh, 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 application. So take a vector in the tension space. Yeah? Let Brownian motion run up to a time t starting at x. Then you are at this random point xt. Yeah? Transport your vector along, with the, along the path of your Brownian motion. Then you are sitting in the tension space to this random point. Yeah? So here you apply Ricci. Ricci at this random position where you are. Then you get something over here, and then you transport it back. Right? This gives you this mapping I call Ricci parallel. Okay? And with this, I solve the equation here. A linear equation which I can solve uh, pass uh, by uh, pass. Uh, covariant equation along the uh, Brownian motion, and I get this uh, family of QTs. You see, if Ricci is zero, if the manifold is Ricci flat, QT will just be the identity. Otherwise, it's some deformation of the uh, parallel transport by Ricci. Yeah, so, um, had been introduced a long time ago by people. I think uh, Paul Maliava was one of the first. He called it uh, a transport or transfer amorti, as people talk about the damped parallel uh, transport uh, nowadays. So if you do uh, analysis on pass or loop space. This is one of the basic uh, objects uh, you should worry about. Well, uh, of course, here by convention, Ricci I can read as, which is defined as a bilinear form, but or, uh, I can uh, uh, define it as linear mapping from the tension space uh, to the tension space by using the metric, converting a differential form back to a tangent vector. Well, coming back uh, to my heat equation, we already know how to solve uh, this uh, uh, equation while well, I'm uh, making assumptions that Brownian motion is uh, not uh, exploding, but I could do it much more generally. So the solution, uh, namely the function u at uh, uh, point x at time t, I get as follows. I take the point x, let my Brownian motion run up to time t, substitute this in my initial function, and then I average over all paths on the manifold. Yeah? So this is a very concrete and simple way to uh, understand uh, this uh, equation. And we already have seen how uh, it works. You uh, write down a certain uh, process. You check this is a martingale. Then you take expectations. Uh, the formula. And... Uh, uh, it's uh, not difficult to show that if you look at the differential of the solution uh, to the heat equation, that, uh, well, this is actually the same as the heat semigroup on one forms applied to df. Yeah? And you have a representation of this guy which is similar to what we have before. Look what we are doing now. Uh, it's uh, PT on one forms applied to DF. You uh, take a DF yeah, 
uh, you uh, evaluate uh, this at a random point x uh, t, yeah? then you transform it back to the starting point of your Brownian motion, and then you multiply it by this qt, or uh, qt I defined on uh, txm, but uh, these are differential forms, so I uh, uh, take uh, the adjoint of the qt I define. So here you see there is Ricci sitting inside. Yeah? This is parallel transport, and this is the initial condition. Well, uh, how to check uh, this uh, same thing uh, as above? You look at uh, this uh, process here and check uh, this is a martingale. Yeah? And then you take expectations for s equals zero, you have just the left-hand side, and for s equal t, yeah, you have uh, t minus t, then gives you df, taking expectation you get this form. So this is a typical representation of the heat flow on one forms, right? And of course, uh, you uh, uh, get from formulas like this immediately estimates, yeah? namely, well, if you estimate the right-hand side, uh, you have to estimate this QT. And for this, you need exactly lower bounds of Ricci. So if you have lower bounds of Ricci, you estimate this damped parallel transport, and you get immediately uh, estimates like uh, this. Yeah. Well, I come back uh, to this uh, later on, but uh, well, it, uh, uh, looking at such formulas, you see on the right-hand side, you have the differential of F. Sometimes you would like to have a formula where no derivatives of f uh, are uh, involved. Uh, so, for instance, if you heard the talk yesterday of uh, François uh, uh, Letrapier, uh, there was uh, such uh, a kind of formula where you want to look at the gradient of PTF, but on the right-hand side, you don't have uh, derivatives of uh, f. Uh, and I show you one type of uh, these formulas. So here it is. Uh, take the solution of the heat equation and look at the differential or the gradient of u, right, in some direction v, uh, given as a tangent vector. Then you have this formula where I have to explain what the different terms are. The first thing we already know, this is the initial condition, uh, Brownian motion starting at x, uh, running up uh, to time t, which is actually the term we needed to represent u in uh, stochastic terms. Then we are multiplying it by some stochastic integral. Yeah. And what is uh, this? Well, uh, here uh, I have some uh, upper uh, limit of my integral. I could integrate up to time t, because t is the time uh, I'm looking at my solution. But I can already uh, stop. I can take the minimum of the first time when Brownian motion starting at x will exit some neighborhood of x. I take some, uh, let's say, some relatively compact neighborhood about to this point, and I stop the process as soon as it goes out of this neighborhood. Yeah? So this is nice, because uh, usually I, uh, to make this well defined, I need lower bounds of Ricci, but on a compact set, yeah, Ricci is always bounded. Yeah? So I don't need any assumptions to write down my formula. Well, I have to continue. What is uh, set? Uh, this is just a flat Brownian motion uh, in the tangent space. 
Yeah? And uh, uh, here is my Q, I defined in terms of uh, uh, Ricci, and L, uh, this is, can be any adapted process of finite energy. Yeah, so finite energy means if you take the derivative, then in some sense it uh, should uh, be uh, L2, or for experts it would mean it's a process taking values in the Cameroon-Martin uh, space. And this process should have the following uh, properties. So it uh, should uh, not be too weird, it should not have a martingale part. I wrote here absolutely continuous uh, pass. It uh, should start at zero uh, at the point V. So remember, V is the direction I'm differentiating uh, it. And it should be uh, zero no later than either I'm at time T, or I'm exiting this uh, small uh, neighborhood. Yeah? Otherwise, I can choose my L as I like. Right? And I can also choose my uh, D here uh, as I like. But of course, uh, if I take uh, D very small, yeah, I have to assure that at the time the process is exiting, uh, the L must be zero. Yeah? So I must drive it to zero very quickly, which gives me here a large L dot. Yeah? So it depends on the time of the problem I'm considering. Yeah? If I have a uh, huge uh, manifold, I uh, can uh, just wait up to time t, then it goes uh, to zero by itself. I can choose L even uh, deterministically. And uh, to get uh, such, uh, uh, such a formula here. So everything is explicit. We have here Brownian motion, we have this process we can choose. Here we see the influence of Ricci, how Ricci comes in, and this is just the initial condition. Yeah. And of course, from here it's very easy to uh, get uh, estimates of the gradient of U in terms of uh, the initial condition F. Yeah. Uh, well, this is typically called uh, bismuth uh, type uh, uh, formula, and the way how to prove it, in particular if there are stopping times involved, uh, is, uh, well, of course, it's some integration by parts uh, on the Wiener space, but the point is you should do integration by parts always on the level of martingales. Yeah? If you do this on the level of martingales, you can still introduce stopping times. Uh, you stop the martingales, there are still martingales. And at the very end, you should take expectation, which gets you back to the level of PDEs. That's the strategy. And quite often, people do it the wrong way, yeah? and then they end up uh, 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 taking derivatives uh, of expectation of functionals where some stopping times are uh, involved. And stopping times usually uh, depend very badly in, in the sense of taking uh, derivatives because if you disturb things a bit and then you may not exit at a given point, you may come back to the, to the domain and uh, so on. Okay, so this here uh, uh, more or less as background about heat equation on Riemannian manifolds. And uh, remember the program, we are interested doing things with respect uh, to moving geometries. And I guess it's definitely not a surprise uh, that all I explained so far can be adapted uh, to this uh, situation, because all my arguments uh, rely uh, on martingale uh, 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 arguments. And uh, this uh, just means I have to adapt the, the setting to get uh, uh, 
things uh, now. For instance, heat equation under geometric flow, uh, like under Ricci flow, or later on I will come back to uh, the work of Perelman by looking at the conjugate uh, heat equation. But this will probably be uh, tomorrow. So just to remind you, we constructed this object uh, uh, we called Brownian motion on uh, space uh, time. And here I do it by fixing some time capital T and let uh, then uh, time run backwards uh, from there, uh, uh, which uh, gives me uh, Brownian motion with respect to uh, a moving metric, but at time r, I really have the metric g t minus r. That's uh, the right setting to deal with uh, such uh, uh, equations here. Then as before, uh, if you have a solution, uh, let time run backwards, uh, capital T minus r, and here you substitute the process starting at x at time zero and let it run up to time r. This will be a martingale taking expectations. You get a formula as before, uh, expectation f of some process. The only uh, thing which is more complicated is this s here uh, because it's no longer homogeneous, but take s equals zero, you have a formula exactly uh, as uh, before, so if you take s equal uh, zero in this equation. Well, there is uh, a, a similar representation for the gradient of u. The only thing I have to redefine is uh, this uh, damped parallel transport, this QT. Yeah? And I have to add to Ricci uh, another term which is given by a time derivative of the metric. So if I take a general evolving uh, uh, or a family, a one parameter family of metrics, I have to introduce this derivative of the metric to get the right damped parallel transport. Then I can go into the formula and everything works uh, as before. But you see here, this is interesting because, uh, well, uh, if we suppose we are uh, following uh, the Ricci flow, this will be zero here. So it means that my QT is just the identity. Yeah? That means in my gradient formulas at the end, Ricci will disappear. Yeah? And this is a well-known uh, uh, observation that in some sense, uh, many folds evolving under Ricci flow behave in many respects like Ricci flat manifolds because Ricci, by the dynamical uh, point of view, Ricci is killed by the deformation of the metric. The metric is deformed in such a way that it kills exactly Ricci. Yeah? And then you can see here that uh, this will go away and uh, you get gradient formulas which look like formulas you have on Ricci flat or on flat uh, spaces. Yeah? And, uh, well, I come back uh, to this uh, 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 immediately. Well, I uh, would like to say something about uh, how to uh, relate uh, curvature bound to uh, a certain type of gradient estimates. So again, I'm going back to the case of a static Riemannian manifold to show you the idea. And uh, looking at this formula for the gradient of U, 
I uh, told you already you get such an estimate for the gradient. So look here, you take PTF, which is my uh, U, uh, where F is the initial condition, you take gradient of PTU. On the right hand side, you have PT of gradient norm. So this is the heat flow when you start with a gradient uh, uh, of F. And if you have a lower bound of reach, it was obvious from my formula that you get such an estimate. And actually, this is equivalent. So you can show having lower bound of reach e curvature is equivalent to a, such a functional inequality. Uh, if you do it in uh, L2, uh, you get uh, a similar equation just with uh, um, L2. And uh, you can write down uh, a lot of uh, equivalent uh, conditions. So you can express it also in terms of a log Sobolev inequality. You can write it in terms of a Poincaré uh, inequality. These are all conditions equivalent to lower, to characterizing lower bound uh, of uh, Ricci. And uh, there are still, I could continue uh, probably until tomorrow to write you uh, conditions. Uh, and uh, this was or is still a very or, uh, popular uh, uh, domain of research. Uh, so if you uh, know a bit uh, the work of Lott, Villani, uh, Theo Sturm, and so on. Uh, they are uh, very much interested in understanding curvature on spaces which are more general than Riemannian manifolds. Yeah? To define Ricci, well, uh, this, uh, you need a differentiable uh, structure. Yeah? But if you, have, if you can give equivalent conditions uh, which, may be, uh, which are more robust and make sense on more general uh, spaces, so for instance here, if uh, you have uh, a corresponding heat flow and you can define the great of a function, then you can make uh, out the sense of such uh, equations, and you have a chance to define Ricci bounds at least uh, in situations uh, where there is no obvious uh, notion uh, for for Ricci. There's also a lot of uh, conditions in terms of entropy. Uh, uh, convexity of entropy, if you take uh, papers of uh, uh, Theo Sturm. But, uh, but uh, the point is, uh, by uh, such equations, you can only characterize bounds for each. You cannot really uh, characterize Ricci uh, by itself. So this is uh, uh, still a bit far off of what uh, we like uh, to do. Well, uh, uh, coming back uh, to uh, the uh, uh, heat equation along some uh, geometric uh, flow, I denote the solution. Well, as I said, this is not uh, homogeneous anymore, so I uh, take the initial condition at time s, yeah, and I look at the solution at time capital T. So I get a two-parameter family of uh, semigroups indexed by S, T, and F is uh, the initial condition. And uh, what I just said uh, before, looking at such gradient estimates, uh, 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 I said uh, evolving under Ricci flow uh, would correspond to being Ricci flat in a static uh, setting. Yeah? So one expects estimates where this exponential factor would be just one. Yeah? And uh, so uh, uh, we uh, can do the following. Well, look at so-called super solutions to the Ricci flow, which uh, uh, corresponds, 
well, if you take the analogy to static manifolds, Ricci flow would correspond to Ricci flat, yeah? and super uh, solutions would uh, correspond uh, to Ricci non-negative. Yeah, and for Ricci non-negative, if we go back to the, uh, to the gradient estimates, the, the K is zero, because uh, zero is a lower bound uh, for Ricci. So it's not surprising that the gradient of uh, this uh, two-parameter uh, uh, semigroup can be estimated by the semigroup of the gradient. Yeah? So here there is no exponential. Factor because, as I said, if you go to my formula, I explained the, uh, which tells you how Ricci enters into the equation. Ricci is killed by, uh, or it's uh, you have on the uh, well, uh, uh, it's not completely true what I'm saying. If you go to this damped parallel transport, you uh, see you get some uh, term which is bounded below by zero and this you use for estimating. And uh, doing as uh, before, we can write down uh, uh, functional inequalities now characterizing uh, super solutions to the Ricci flow, completely in analogous to what uh, we uh, did uh, before, characterizing lower bounds of Ricci in terms of uh, gradient estimates. You see here on the right-hand side, there is no exponential uh, effect, right? But uh, you may ask, okay, uh, super solutions to uh, the Ricci flow. This is uh, probably uh, not so interesting. Can we also characterize uh, uh, solutions to the Ricci flow? So uh, can we uh, 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 write down uh, estimates which characterize not just super solutions, obviously these kind of estimates are equivalent to the uh, greater equal here, they are too weak, but can we find other inequalities which characterize exactly Ricci flow? Yeah? And it turns out, yes, uh, we can do, but uh, we have to go from the manifold to the path space over the manifold. Yeah. Uh, remember, if uh, looking at the heat equation, you take the initial function, you evaluate it at xt, and then you take the expectation. Yeah. So uh, it means uh, uh, this is on path space, this is just a one-point cylindrical function where you have a pass, you evaluate it at one point, and then you take the expectation. Yeah? Okay, uh, uh, let me uh, explain uh, the setting I'm going to deal with. We, we go to pass space. So pass space now on uh, our... Uh, uh, space-time manifold, so uh, uh, time, as usual, is running backwards, and I have a, a pass on M, and I carry along capital T minus T. Yeah? So this gives me uh, a pass in space-time, and uh, Brownian motion uh, based at X uh, capital T, I define it, gives me a measure on pass space. Yeah? measure uh, induced by this process. Yeah? So xt uh, is the Brownian motion with respect to the family uh, G, capital T minus uh, uh, T uh, of uh, matrix. And uh, the important point is this gives me a measure on the pass space or the pass based at uh, at x t, yeah, so at time zero, x t uh, will be x, and this will be capital T. Well, on uh, given such uh, uh, 
space-time uh, curve, I take an evaluation at k uh, points uh, between 0 and t. So I evaluate the x component here at times sigma 1, sigma 2, and so on, sigma k. Yeah. This is uh, what uh, people call a cylindrical, uh, or uh, one can uh, define cylindrical functions on path space, which only depend on this, or which factorize via this evaluation at uh, k uh, discrete uh, points. Yeah. So a functional on path space, which is defined by looking at the path x, only at this k uh, different uh, uh, times. Yeah? And uh, so uh, uh, evaluating, combining with some u on mk, which is nice, compact support and so on, will be my notion of a cylindrical uh, function on uh, pass space. Well, uh, then uh, I uh, define a type of gradient uh, on a path space. This is uh, basically the same as uh, Maliava derivative uh, on a path space written for cylindrical uh, function. So you uh, take uh, derivatives uh, of this u in the different direction, parallel uh, transport uh, uh, it, take the sum, and uh, take this thing here composed with the evaluation at uh, uh, the uh, discrete uh, points, which gives me a notion of, uh, of a parallel gradient for cylindrical functions on uh, path space. Well, uh, uh, with uh, this object, I can now go forward and can really characterize solutions to the Ricci flow. Namely, I get, I need to have gradient estimates, but no longer for one-point cylindrical functions as I had uh, before. Such uh, estimates are uh, too weak, but I have to go on pass space, and uh, I take uh, the gradient of expectation of such a cylindrical function, by estimating by the parallel gradient or Maliava derivative of f expectation of this. So this here should be also an e like uh, the one uh, here. As before, the only point is it's no longer uh, on m, it's on pass space. Yeah? And what I'm saying, this is an equivalent condition to uh, GT following Ricci flow. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, this is interesting because, uh, as I said uh, before, uh, people uh, on uh, manifolds or spaces more general uh, than manifolds have been interested in characterizing Ricci in terms of functional inequalities. Yeah. And uh, it's a long-standing problem in the theory of Ricci flow, how to, uh, to uh, or to come up, for instance, with a, with a notion of weak solutions to the Ricci flow equation. Yeah? Uh, because, of course, if uh, uh, you look at the program of uh, uh, Perelman, uh, well, uh, he uh, uh, lets uh, Ricci flow uh, 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 work, and at uh, certain points, uh, singularities appear. Then he uh, investigates uh, the singularities. He does some surgery, and then he continues with the Ricci flow. Yeah? 
Hegel, and uh, until uh, he uh, ends up at infinity, and there he sees uh, something, something interesting. But as soon as you have a singularity in your equation, it's no longer, no longer well defined. So one would like to have a notion of weak solutions or something which makes also sense going over singularities or something like that. Yeah? And well, here you see at least uh, something which is very promising in this uh, direction because you have a characterization in terms of functional inequalities which you may be able to extend uh, uh, or to make sense of such uh, inequalities also in cases where uh, you uh, have trouble with the original Ricci flow. Okay, if I understand correctly, I have to finish uh, now. Thanks a lot for your attention.